his hands. It's called To the Mother on the Flight to Denver. I sat beside you in silence, staring straight ahead and hoping that you weren't a talker. It was early, too early for conversation, almost too early for reading, but I did anyway. You seemed to be uncomfortable, which also made me uneasy. Your excuse was a fresh sling screaming that a recent surgery had hit you, its whiteness not having seen travel. I read my book, you appeared to be sleeping, until I noticed the small movements of your lips, speaking silent words to yourself or your God. Were you afraid of flight and sought comfort? Were you traveling to comfort a relative and asking for strength? The deep growl of the pilot's voice filled the cabin, seatbelts and trays upright. We were approaching Denver. In my mind, my mother's face smiled and I knew the right, the polite thing to do. I offered to grab your bag from the overhead. You showered me in thanks, smiles, and I felt your warmth I had missed the whole trip. I asked about your arm, your rotator cuff. You assured me it was healing nicely, but surprisingly limited for healthy. My son had his limiting too, especially when traveling from Japan. You asked if he was a Marine, and I saw something behind your eyes. Yes, discharge now, and back in the States. You asked about his life now, where he lived, and if he was happy not being in the service. I told you about North Carolina, the place he worked, and how neither of us saw the other as much as we'd liked. Promises made for Christmas, and maybe a summer trip next year. Life is good for my boy. Where's your boy now, I asked you. Where's he live? I saw the sunshine leave your smile. I saw loneliness pour into your eyes and tumble onto your cheeks. Arlington Cemetery, you answered, a gut punch that I still haven't recovered from and doubt I ever will. I stammered, apologized. You smiled, shook your head, told me about his love for the Corps and for the country. You explained that you just liked to know the sorts of things he might be doing had he not been caught in that ambush. Would he be living in North Carolina, planning trips home when work slowed? We hugged at the gate. A porter carried your bag. I turned and carried your memory through the terminal and on through the rest of my life.